Right, hello there, my friends. How are you? It's nice to see you. Welcome to what? Welcome to today's live lesson. Very excited to be with here with you and me today. We're going to be talking about the exciting topic of giving advice. This one over here. We're going to be talking about some vocabulary, answering some questions, anecdotes about advice and some idioms as well. Plus, we have a very special guest joining us today and we'll be having a conversation all about advice. That is fantastic. I cannot wait. So listen, let's get the show. Let's get this show on the road. Let's begin. Hello, my friends. How are you? Listen, this is great. How exciting. It's a, a lovely today. A lovely today. It's a lovely day today. I can feel that spring is in the air. The sun is shining. The temperature has gone up a little bit and the flowers have started to blossom. We've got some lovely colours in the streets here. It's looking very nice. Um, let's find out just very quickly who is in the house. Hello, who's in the house? Majd al good morning, nice to see you. Keenwood Yulin, hello, nice to see you again, of course. Sakshi, hello, nice to see you. And Eron, Erika from Italy. Menu Gazwami, good afternoon. And also Javita from Nigeria, lovely, welcome Javita. Um, Sini Wright, good morning, nice to see you. Uh, Ulvi Hello, and a big hello to all of you who are here joining me. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. We're going to be looking at advice, giving it, taking it, ignoring it, whichever you want to do. Really doesn't matter. What's important is the language that we use. Um, so what are we going to do today? Let me just go through and give you a little bit of a run through um, of today's class. We're going to look at advice. We're going to talk about vocabulary, right? Um, and then what will we do? We'll have our guest Martin, right? So Martin, this really is Martin in real life. Um, he's a, a musician, but he'll tell you more about himself and about what he does with English teaching. Um, so we'll have a conversation with Martin. Um, we'll do some listening practice today. And our good old friend, Stan the Man, is back in town. So we'll be doing some listening practice with Stan. So you can do some listening and speaking. We'll be looking at some idioms, of course. We always like to look into some nice idioms and collocations. For example, give it your best shot. <laughs> do you know what that means? Give it your best shot? You're going to find out today. We'll be doing the sample answers, as always. One or two sample answers from IELTS questions and Kahoot as well. And of course, we have a few things to celebrate today. Um, we've got something to celebrate with Martin, but we've also got a celebration because I got 500,000. Is that right? That's crazy. 500,000. That's crazy. 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. Amazing. Thank you so much, all of you who are watching. Um, so I'm going to do a lucky draw. 500,000 people, five courses. I'm giving away three, five free courses. Um, today, you can choose whichever course you like if you win, actually, because maybe you've done one and you want to do another. So I've got two courses. You can choose whichever one. At the end of the class, we'll be doing the lucky draw and finding out who those five lucky people are who've been commenting on the post yesterday. So that's what we've got lined up for today. Very, very nice. I just wanted to share with you, I got a, a comment I get lots of comments from students and it's so nice. It actually makes my day and it really motivates me when I get up in the morning and I check a few emails or comments and there's such beautiful things um, and it's very motiv motivating. So thank you very much for those. This was from, and excuse my pronunciation, uh, Duong Yuen Dang. And he said, hi, Keith, thanks a lot for your videos and courses. I have a 7.5 in speaking and overall an 8. Thanks a lot. Even I have done my test. 
but I would love to watch your videos on YouTube. So even though he's finished IELTS, he still wants to watch the videos on YouTube. I think that's great because I do believe language learning is not just IELTS. IELTS is a small part, but important part of the journey. It's a whole lifelong learning, right? Um, carry on learning English afterwards for your life, for your business, for your travel, maybe for work, you know? So I think that's great. And if you can still, if I can still help you, then even better. Very, very happy to do that. Lovely. Good. So let's see how you're all doing before we kick in with our vocabulary bit. Let me just say a few hellos. We've got Florence says you deserve it. Thank you very, very much. Um, Singi Shilpa, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good. For Lucky, thank you too. Lovely. And from Slovakia, Agata Berezova. Again, apologies. Um, and I'm, you know, I must say also thank you. I have quite a few people who are, and I don't know how to pronounce your names, right? With the um, Cyrillic script. So I, sorry, Cyrillic, the Arabic script. And I'm not sure, but thank you also. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thank you so much. Um, and others from Uzbekistan. Again, this is Cyrillic script. So I cannot pronounce your name, but thank you very much for you guys in Uzbekistan. There seems to be a community, a growing community of Uzbek Uzbekistanians, if that's a word. If not, I've just made it up. So there, if you're an Uzbekistanian, <laughs> then welcome. Paya Patel, thank you very, very much. Right, from Iran. There you go. There you go. That'll teach me to recognize my languages from Iran. Nice. Nice to see you all here. Sakshi, it's going to be fun. Yes, I think today is going to be fun. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up. So let's kick off. Um, just to remind you at the start, if you are on YouTube, of course, turn on the uh, notification button, this one, so you can find out about my new videos coming out. I have a new video recorded um, on Saturday about midday will be coming out. So looking forward to that. It's all about how to improve your speaking skills. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, and what else? The website, just to let you know, you can find out lots of resources on the keithspeakingacademy.com. Um, I take all of our lesson notes and put them onto the website. So if you want to go to the website, I'll show you right now where you can go and find out these resources. So if you go to the keithspeakingacademy.com, um, there's lots of stuff here the, about the test, about resources. Under resources, we've got, you know, top tips, useful tools. There's a vocabulary guide. There's practice tests that lots of students are doing now, which is to you just sit with me, a recording of me, and I ask you questions and you answer them, right? You can see other students doing mock tests. But the free live lessons up here, this is where you can find all these PDF downloads. Um, from the latest class. So you can watch um, the video here or you can just download. Last week we did transport, right? Um, and all the previous lessons are here, Animals Books, in alphabetical order. So you can just download them or if you prefer, you, maybe you're on your mobile phone, you can just click and go and read the lesson notes um, directly on the, on the website. I think I've got so many windows open now, it's a little bit slow, but normally it's quite quick. So there, you can see lots of stuff there that you can be uh, you can be watching lots of, a big emphasis on, on vocabulary to help you with these different topics. So that's it, free live lessons, that's on the website. Um, go and check it out, keithspeakingacademy.com. Brilliant, let me just close some of my windows. Let's have a look then, essential vocabulary. Let us start with essential vocabulary, which is over here, I think. Yes. <laughs> and I become a little circle. So essential vocabulary to start with, right? Um, we're talking about advising and advice. So listen really carefully to the pronunciation. The verb, right, is to advise. It's a voiced sound, 
Z, z, a bit like the B, right? Z, advise, advise, advise. That's the verb, right? The first one. However, the noun, the second one, is advice. It's not voiced, so it's a s. I like the snake, right? S, advice, advice. So put them together to advise, advice. Can you hear the difference? It's a very small difference. Normally the context will help you make it clear, but there it is a different sound, right? So advice is uncountable. And this is a big, really common mistake. People say, I will give you a advice or two advices. No, 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 <laughs> don't do that. You cannot count advice. So we say, he gave me some advice, right? He gave me some advice. If you want to count it, you can say a piece of advice, right? She gave me a good piece of advice, or maybe she gave me a bad piece of advice. Possibly, you never know. Um, but advice is uncountable. And there's a lot of words like this that you find in IELTS, like news, like information, um, advice. All of these are uncountable, right? So it's a piece of news, a piece of information, um, or a bit of advice, a bit of news, right? In more spoken English, we often say, he gave me a bit of advice. So all of your books are going to tell you a piece of, but when we're speaking, actually, um, a bit of is also also very, very common, right? He gave me a bit of advice. So we've got the verb, the noun, and the adjective. Advisable. If you remember my pronunciation video last Saturday, word stress, which syllable? Advisable. Advisable. It's the second. It's this one, right? Advisable. Um, advisable is the adjective. It's not very advisable to watch too much TV. It's not very advisable to spend a lot of time on your mobile phone, for example, right? So it's not advisable. Great. Um, when it comes to giving advice, we can say different things, right? When we want to give advice. Let me take these all down together. When we're giving advice, we can say, first of all, he advised me to do something. He advised me to go. Or recommend. He recommended me to go. Right? It's actually a really, really interesting city. I advise you to go. Uh, my brother recommended me to go. Right? That's one structure, very, very common. The other common structure is he recommended that I go. So this is not advice, but only recommend and suggest these two. He recommended that I do it. He suggested that I go. Um, so it's I plus actually it's, it's the verb, but it's the subjunctive. Right. And you can see it's the subjunctive because here it's not I recommended that she goes. No, that she go. So this is actually it's the subject plus the subjunctive. It's quite unusual in English to have the subjunctive, but we do get it sometimes. And this is one of the cases, right? Recommended. I recommended that she go. So the subjunctive, the subjunctive is actually, it's the same as the infinitive um, for all of them. I go, you go, she go, he go, they go, we go, etc. So the subjunctive is dead easy. Just remember, she go. I suggested that she go. And the last one that we often use is this one. Um, recommend with the gerund. I, he recommended going. 
So where you're not talking about who, not not me, but he recommended going to the cinema, right? So we can say, he recommended me to go to the cinema. Um, I recommended that she go to the cinema or he recommended going to the cinema. <laughs> so you've got three possibilities. There are more, but three is enough, I think, right? Three is enough to begin. So my question then, my question for you guys is in the comment below, um, think about some advice from your parents. What advice did your parents give you, right? What did your parents recommend or suggest, right? Give me a, a sentence in your comments. Let's have a look. <laughs> Mohammed says, I must say your advice in the live English lesson will boost our score. I hope so. <laughs> yes. Katie says some pieces of advice. That's good. Good. Gapandeep says a little bit of advice. That's good. Max Gaming, hello from Uzbekistan. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Let's just share a few comments here. Uh, Sator says my parents recommended me to study harder. Nice. Very, very good. Um, my parents recommended that I stop gaming. Perfect. Yes. Um, Shah says my parents recommended me to watch Keith's videos. Really? Well, that's great. Good parents. Listen to your parents. Ah, now then. OK, good point. Huang advised me giving up smoking. So the giving up ING you can only have with recommend and suggested, not advice, right? If it's advice, then you want this one. He advised me to. Okay. So he advised me um, to give up smoking, we would say here. He, because it's he advised me to do something, right? He advised me to give up smoking. Okay. Um, we've also got wear warm clo clothes. Good. They recommend that I learn English. Okay. Good. That's in the present, so probably still true. Um, Lin Yi says, my father advised me to work hard. He advised me to work hard. Very, very good. Fathers are good at doing that, aren't they? Um, my parents always advised me to do my best. Very nice, ZB. Now, Amrita, be careful with this one. Mum suggested me to go. If we go back, right, just remember, suggested, so me to go, is going to be with advised and with recommended, right? But suggested is either that or doing, right? So let's change this. Mum suggested, well, if you want to say me, you would say mum advised me to go to the office. To go to office? To go to office or to go to the office? To go to the office is a place you work. To go to office... Sounds like you're going to work for the government. Maybe that's what your mum advised you, maybe. <laughs> right. Adriana says, they recommended that I study more. Right. Perfect. They recommended that I studied more. Yeah. Perfect. Very, very nice. Lovely. Some lovely examples there. Let me just move on one moment. Just bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> Here we go. Let me come back. I'm going to look at some collocations, some common collocations we can use here. Um, so with <coughs> advice, with a s as a s advice, <laughs> it's not an s, but it's pronounced because it's the noun. As we said, a bit of advice is good. A friendly piece of advice is quite nice. A friendly piece of advice, right? My uncle gave me a friendly piece of advice. 
Now that means not only that they are a friend, right? But that they're trying to persuade you to do something without forcing you. So your parents, probably your parents <clears throat> give you advice because they, they want to push you a little bit harder. Um, and probably your boss or your mentor will give you advice. But somebody who's being more gentle will probably give you some a friendly piece of advice, right? Now, your boss or your parent can say, this is a friendly piece of advice. And what they really mean is, you have to take it. <laughs> this is a friendly, it's like I'm trying, I'm pretending to be a friend. I'm giving you a friendly bit of advice, but you'd better take it. Better take the advice or follow the advice, right? Different kinds of advice, constructive advice, <clears throat> which is basically positive or, or helpful, let's say, helpful advice. Um, unsolicited advice is advice you don't want, right? Do you ever get unsolicited advice? You know, when people, you're minding your own business, you're doing your things and people come over to you without you asking and say, you know, you should do that. Have you thought of doing this? Why don't you do that? You need to do this. I didn't ask you, right? Why are you telling me? Unsolicited advice. It's advice you don't ask for. But people still give it, right? <laughs> Lots of people are very good at that giving you unsolicited advice. <laughs> Just say the word with me. It's a difficult word. Unsolicited. And I'm going to put the stress on the L. Unsolicited. Unsolicited advice. D, 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 D. Unsolicited advice. That's it. Nice. You've got sensible advice, right? Which is um, logical and also useful, right? Sensible, logical, useful. That's sensible advice, right? Great. And you can talk about heeding advice, which is to follow advice or take advice. So we can say to heed advice or to follow or to take advice, right? The opposite would be to ignore advice. I ignored my father's advice. Uh, don't do that. Well, you can do, right? You don't have to follow your parents' advice. Um, but if you decide not to heed their advice, then you're going to ignore their advice, right? Simple as that. Lovely. Good. So let me just um, do this. Great. Let me check in with you. Let's see how you're doing. What have we got? <laughs> Sana says, yes, solicited advice is not important. Well, that's right. It's usually not important. It's people get involved in your business. Just be careful with your spelling, Sana, right? Solicited, uh, solicited advice. <laughs> There's lots of S's today. Solicited advice, right? Great. Yeah, Mehmet. This often happens. People who hate me give unsolicited advice, right? Often the case. Um, Manjiri says, I always accept sensible advice. Yep, that's logical. <clears throat> My uncle give me friendly piece of advice to go to work. <laughs> You're being very... Um... <laughs> Where are your ease? You've dis All your ease have disappeared. <laughs> friendly piece of advice. I understand what you're saying, yes. <clears throat> Eduardo, this is a nice segue. A friend of mine recommended me to listen to Rock and Roll English podcast. Very nice, great. And that brings me very nicely onto our guest today. <laughs> um, Rock and Roll English. Martin from Rock and Roll English is joining us today. And what I'm going to do, thank you, Eduardo, for that link, a nice link. I just need a second to call Martin and to bring him in to the party. Did I say party? The class. <laughs> it's fun though, right? Right, here we go. I wonder if he's watching. He might be watching on YouTube. You never know. 
Let's see. I think he's ready. We're going to pull him in in a moment. Right. Let's see. <clears throat> Hello, Keith. Hello. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? Not too bad. Is my camera not switching on? It's not switching on at the moment. No. OK, there we go. There you are. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Good. Right. Now, I'm just going to bring you in to the... Um, OK. Because you're in Skype. I'm going to bring you into the... Uh, into the thingy the show okay just one big moment. moment the big moment here you go <laughs> okay so i'm here yeah you're here you're in you can you can only see me right but you are actually in yeah i'm looking at the best bit though which is you don't know yeah yeah <laughs> well that depends on your point of view so um just let me see if i can change your i'm just going to pan you out a little bit if i can Okay, Maybe no problem. You can see your your flag because you've got this fantastic flag, right? Yeah, that's right. Back Although a bit. it does kind of have a grammatical error in it because I forgot the other <laughs> apostrophe to put <laughs> there. But never mind. Oh uh, dear, good job. My, you're my not head's in the way anyway. My head, my head's blocking that. Your hair's in the way as well. That's right. <laughs> so, just to everybody watching, I'm going to say a big welcome to Martin. Thank you for joining us, Martin. Great to thanks. see you here. Thanks for having me. Good. Now you can't see the comments, but I'll keep an eye on the comments as as you as we talk. Okay. We're going to well have a bit of a chat and then go on to talk about the topic of advice. Um, okay. But I'd really like to begin with you and rock and roll English. I mean, tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, it's just I have a podcast that helps. Um, I would say intermediate learners of English and above. Um, and it's just a podcast where I just have a chat with my friends, basically, about more or less anything, lots of stupid stuff, just to mm -hmm. keep people entertained. Because um, when, well, I, I suppose I am still learning Italian, but I was always looking for Italian podcasts to listen to, and I always found them quite boring. Um, and I just wanted something um, just like everyday, normal chat that you have with your friends in a pub let's say yeah. um and so that's very much what it is and then i hide and then i highlight the rock and roll vocabulary um right. and then give that to the listeners um and then yeah and then we also have a members area where people share their what i call r and r stories i always share mine on the podcast and then in the members area people share theirs I always like to go for embarrassing stories. I think that embarrassing stories kind of bring people together, don't they? No one mm. wants to hear about perfect lives. I, no one, That's right. You don't want to hear about my Ferrari and my big house, <laughs> neither of which I have. But um, There's enough of that on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pe people want to hear about you breaking down um, and, yeah, these kind of things. So, yeah, I always try and share embarrassing stories. Fantastic. Great. Good. There's a lot of people saying hello, welcome, um, which is great. Um, somebody, Ashraf, says you look like Ishant Sharma, Indian cricket bowler. OK, interesting. That's a, that's a, that's a new one. I've had um, lots in the past. What, uh, one I often get is actually Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, th this is a new one. That's a new one for you. So, yeah. uh, Lenny is asking how to get into the podcast your um if i've got it right i'm just going to put it up i think it's if i've got this right is rockandrollenglish.com right yes that's right and you can find the actual podcast on all of the podcast apps spotify itunes podbean pod addict mm. all, all of them they're all there. I, I, it's difficult to remember them all and um i was talking about celebrations today and um so you've got something to celebrate i think right um yeah i suppose the, the I, I imagine we're talking about the birth of my daughter <laughs> the birth of your daughter you are a yeah. new dad i am indeed she was born on valentine's day which is an easy one to oh, remember oh, oh so, congratulations thanks yeah um i'd always or i had never liked valentine's day i always thought it was just a complete waste of time but now i suppose i will have to celebrate <laughs> celebrate in some way on you valentine's will. day you will indeed yeah. and have you chosen a name uh, yeah, otherwise, you know, she was born like nearly well, two and a half weeks ago. So it'd be a bit strange to have no name. Um, her name is Lara, like um, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. 
is that your ambition aspiration for her to be a tomb raider yeah exactly mm. that's, that's, <laughs> that's the dream <laughs> fantastic great um lovely and i if i remember rightly you're living in italy is that right correct in Whereabouts? sicily to be precise in sicily yeah sicily what's it like over there fantastic um ma mainly for the weather obviously growing up in england um didn't really have such wonderful sunshine um but here i think i posted a picture on instagram i think it was on the 6th of february i, I, w I was actually in the sea mm -hmm. um went to the beach wow. and like, i can see the sea from my balcony um so yeah li life is good sounds nice sounds very very nice brilliant good um so <laughs> congratulations coming in lots of congratulations okay Lovely. thanks yes i say he does look like most actors who play jesus <laughs> <laughs> okay yep see told you there you go you've sown the seed yeah. now martin we're going to talk a bit about advice what, what i'm going to try and do is just you know have a, a natural conversation but every now and again i will come out and put like a whiteboard you can't see it but there's a whiteboard on the screen and just make a few notes okay. of interesting language um so feel free to ask me questions or point out any interesting language i might use okay if i do um so advice i'm interested i mean talking about advice what kind of advice do you give other people um I suppose, uh, obviously, being a teacher, <laughs> I try to give people advice about um, how to learn languages, yeah. um, well, in particular to, to learn English, um, how to do well on maybe uh, an exam, like the IELTS exam, mm. when people ask me about that. Um, in fact, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking like of some advice I'd received, and this is actually advice I often pass on for the IELTS speaking exam, mm. because before my, um, so at my brother's wedding, because as you know, in England, at weddings, we give speeches, and I was the best man, so I had to give a speech, and I, just before I gave that speech, I remember my cousin, who is older than me and had done many speeches in his life, said to me, go slowly like pause right. because if you start speaking like this and you start speaking really fast and no one understands what you're saying yeah. um and because which is often the case because you get anxious and then you start speaking fast and then no one really understands what you're saying um so for example that's advice i often pass on to people when they're doing the IELTS speaking exam to not right. speak right. too fast um to go slow to pause at the correct time um so that's the main piece of advice I give. I don't like giving too much advice because I, I don't think I'm a good person to do it because I make <laughs> lots of stupid mistakes in life, I think. <laughs> hey, but we all learn through our mistakes, right? Often that's exactly. good. It's exactly. essential to make mistakes. Really, I'm going to pull out uh, just something that you said there and just show because I think that's useful. We, we talked earlier about giving advice, but you said um, pass on advice. Mm -hmm. So advice I pass on for the exam is to speak more slowly or not speak too fast. Mm -hmm. So that I think is nice to pass on advice. Lovely. Um, now you, you talked about not only giving advice, but taking advice. Um, do you like it when people give you advice? Um, well, I mean, it depends who it is, I suppose. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, um so yeah I'm, I'm i do like it i mean especially at the moment i've been getting um, lots of advice about uh parenting for example yeah, yeah, yeah. um and all of that advice is very much welcome because mm -hmm. um i basically have no idea what i'm doing um but the, the good thing <laughs> i've come to realize is that um basically no one has any idea about parenting yeah. um I always thought that once you're a parent, you, you're prepared. But from from what I understand, yeah, like what I've come to realise is that basically no one does, yeah. and you just kind of make it up as you go along. Absolutely, it's totally made up. I mean, I, I realise that I was very anxious before my daughter was born about what should we do, and to be honest, I, even the the few th articles or bits of books I read about it just went out the window because as <laughs> soon as she was born, everything just went so fast. 
that exactly. you, you don't have time to react. It's almost innate. You just respond as a human, right? So it, exactly. Yeah, no, it's exactly the same as me. I read a few books. And like you said, that very much went out the window in like five seconds. Um, how old is your daughter then, Keith? She's now 14. Okay, well. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she's grown up quite a bit now. She's now at um, secondary school. Mm-hmm. Um, and interestingly, I think when, when she was going through the kind of 8, 9, 10 period, there there are, I found it more useful to, to read books about the development of the oh, right. okay. age, emotional development. Um, and you also do get support from schools, at least we did. I mean, teachers at school are very much focused on working with parents to help them, and that mm-hmm. was really beneficial. Um, okay. Yeah, but as a baby, you know, they eat and they poo and they keep you up at night. De- definitely poo, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned this on, a, I think, on Monday's podcast, how uh, changing nappies is, is quite difficult, mainly because that's the time she decides to poo. Um and I, I described it as, I, th- I think it was Mike Tyson, the boxer, said, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. And <laughs> I kind of feel like that with changing the nappy. Like I have a plan of like what I'm I'm going to do. Yeah. And then she starts pooing. And then, again, that plan just goes out the window and it's just total panic. Yeah. And you manage uh, as well as you possibly can. Yeah, exactly. And try yeah. and avoid avoid nappy duty next time. <laughs> yeah exactly that's great there's a few interesting things there i'm going to just pull up again on the whiteboard for the the guys watching um it's interesting you said i to get out we talked about getting advice but you said i've been getting advice about something which is actually a really nice use of mm-hmm. that tense i've been getting advice present perfect continuous about something in this case parenting Mm-hmm. And we were looking at collocations earlier, just before you came on. And here you talked about welcome advice. It's very, it's welcome mm-hmm. advice, which is advice you like and you want to get. Of course. course. And this expression, it went out of the window. We had that <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We did. What does that mean exactly? How would you explain that? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it literally, so I think I was talking about like a plan. Yeah. So basically you have the plan and then, if you talk about literally it's literally thrown out the window so it's not useful anymore right Um, it's just it's gone yeah that that's brilliant yeah i'm gonna put that in let's put it's it's no longer useful i was thinking about how on earth to explain that but that's good it's no longer (laughs) useful it went out of the window so especially we talk about plans the plan went out of the window right yeah yeah of course course. yeah yeah and then you have to just just basically basically come up with something something new. new Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yes. You've talked about, I mean, the advice with the, the baby there. Have, have you ever, has, has, there, has there been any useful advice that people have given you? Um, I think probably the um, most useful advice I've received was actually from someone in the, uh, what we call the rock and roll English family. So the community for the podcast. Uh-huh. Um, and she told me basically that there is no right way and the right way is your way like so like mm. listen to your baby's needs um and like yeah there there is no right way because i was really worried about oh, i have to do it this way or this way or this way and yeah she basically said to me that there, there is no right way do what you think is best right. and and go from there basically so that that i thought was the most useful because i'd heard things like okay if your baby um is you have to feed your baby every two hours if the baby's sleeping you have to wake the baby up and then feed him or her and then other people say something completely different this, this is the other thing about advice actually is you get completely different advice even when we were in hospital i can't even remember what it was now but one of the nurses came in and told us to do something mm-hmm. and then literally one hour later another nurse came in and told us to do the complete opposite <laughs> uh, so <laughs> So and then what bit, do you do? That's really, that can really panic you, right, as a, as yeah. a new parent? Um, exactly. So, like I said, this person um, in the rock and roll English family said, basically, there is no right way. So just do it your way and that's fine. Right, right. Brilliant. I, I'm tempted. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'm tempted to ask the, the, the viewers if they've got any advice for you. Because I know we've got okay. quite a few um, with young toddlers um, okay. who are bringing up two or th- well one or two or three children um 
toddlers, wow. kind of the two to three year olds. I wonder yeah. if any of you out there have got any advice for Martin. Um, I said it's it would be very much welcome. So um, <laughs> let's yeah. have a look. Let's see what people say. Um, great. But when you yeah, when you mention they have like one, two, or three, especially if they're like close in age. That yep. must be very difficult. I think it's about my brother. My brother's less than two years older than me. So it must have been a nightmare for my parents when we were young. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's that's true. I'm not sure. I've only got one child, so I don't know. But I, I do know families who've got here in Spain that the they call it the, the a large family, right? So children mm. of five or six children is quite common. Um, and I've always been in awe and admiration how they yeah. bring up all these children and they said actually it's really easy because the more children you have they actually look after each other oh, perfect. the older children <laughs> take the duties off you and actually start yeah. take, caring for the other children um so that's that's quite interesting okay maybe i'll tell my wife we need to have five then <laughs> yes in the next <laughs> five years <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know what she'll say about that yeah <laughs> great i've got we've got I can put up some comments here. Dedic says there is no right way. Just follow your instinct. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. This is what I like. Yeah. I'm just going to write these down because follow your instinct is a nice expression. Mm, definitely. Especially in that sense with um with children. Shakun says, don't complain and cherish the moments with your kids. Yeah. And and another good one. Which, yeah, is again, I think very good advice because sometimes I do find myself like holding my daughter and then in my, my other hand, I've got my phone and I'm checking Instagram and I think like, this isn't right. Is it like, I should really put my phone down uh, and cherish guilty. this moment. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. True. But you know, I do wonder when, when they're a baby, you, you wonder how much they really know about you being on Instagram. I mean, do they really <laughs> care? I mean, if they're eight, then yes, they, they, they want yeah. your attention and, and you're ignoring them. But if they're a baby, some people say they do know, right? They can, they can sense that you're mm. ignoring them. But I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is. You do sometimes think if you could just talk, that would be very useful. Like when she, she's crying yeah. and like so she's um, just been fed, um, changed her nappy. And she's still crying. You think, what, what else could it be? If you could just let me know, that would be great. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Can you just Instagram me a text? Yeah. Tell me what the problem is. <laughs> is that, so send me a DM on uh, <laughs> uh, on Instagram and let me know. Yeah. Exactly. It would be nice. Yeah. Nice. We've got uh, Surijith who says, my advice is don't take any advice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> ZB says, one kid is enough. I cannot cannot imagine a second one. Okay, right, oh, right. That's interesting. Um, yeah, my my wife will be happy with that. Um, that's the first thing she said to me after giving birth um, was, "We are never having any more children again." <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough labour, was it? Um, I, I think so. Yeah. I actually wasn't allowed in the delivery room because of the COVID right. um, restrictions. But my wife said. Um, it's a good job you weren't because you would have definitely fainted because she knows I'm I'm a bit queasy and right. don't really like all of like this kind of stuff. I was disappointed, but I think maybe in hindsight, it might have been for the best. That's quite interesting. I mean, having a, a baby in times of COVID must be quite mm. difficult for, for everybody, right? Yeah. It's a bit anxious. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we also got married last year in times of COVID. So, wow. yeah, we, we, we love COVID. You're apparently. a COVID family. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Um, I'm just going to share up again. So we had a, a couple of interesting expressions just to share with people. Oh, this was earlier. Completely different advice. That's another collocation, I guess. You get completely different mm -hmm. advice. Follow your instinct. I'm a bit queasy. Queasy, mm -hmm. I think, is when you get dizzy easily, right? Yeah, and yeah, especially, especially when, when, uh, when um, you see, you see maybe like maybe blood, blood, or like stuff like, like, stuff like stuff that, like that, that, that makes you feel dizzy, like you're going to faint. Yeah, yeah, feeling queasy, yeah, dizzy, yeah. faint, maybe sick as well. Exactly. Mm. So you didn't see the birth. You did? Were you the father like me? Actually, I had to wait outside, and they came out with the baby and handed me the baby. Um, well, I, that didn't actually, not exactly that. So 
after the birth they brought my wife up i was in like a private room upstairs waiting for her to come um and that's like i was expecting like a big moment of like hugging each other like on a film of like we hadn't <laughs> seen each other and then she just she and then she just said to me that was when she said we're never having any more children right. and then i went downstairs and then and then i could only actually see um our baby through the glass at this point because they were running some kind of test so i didn't actually hold her in my arms and for about another probably two hours probably right right mm. wow yeah. interesting yeah brilliant um more advice there's lots of advice coming in now okay <laughs> I, I did ask listen to your baby and be very patient yeah patience is a good one yeah patience definitely need that um that's yeah. from nh from mama mama must be a mother okay my right. advice to martin is to keep the ball rolling in changing the nappy of your baby and to be a good father in bringing her up. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Nice. Um, so what, connected to patients, actually, um, some other advice I um, received. Well, actually, I saw this online, actually. Someone was talking about babies and he said, um, if your baby is having a meltdown, that mm. doesn't mean that you need to, um, which I think is quite good. So obviously a meltdown is like when you're, it's like going crazy um, and because it's quite easy I think to do that yourself when the baby's crying and stuff but to like right. try and smile and laugh so then the baby feels relaxed right it's yeah because the more agitated you get the worse exactly. it gets then they get exactly. panicky that's true yeah I like that expression yes I'm going to write that down have a meltdown so <laughs> to go crazy Lots yeah, of yeah. people, I think that's used a lot. We talk about a lot of teenagers have meltdowns with um, <laughs> crisis on social media. Um, people losing their jobs are having meltdowns. Mental yeah, yeah. health being affected. It's quite a common well, expression well, nowadays. Well, I was, well, I was about to say with COVID and everything, um, I think maybe many people uh, <laughs> may be using this expression of having meltdowns of whether it's being locked in at home yeah. or unfortunately, obviously many people maybe have lost their jobs and stuff like that. So I think yeah. it's quite an easy time to <laughs> have a meltdown, unfortunately. Indeed, it is. Unfortunately, hopefully, hopefully things will get better. Yeah. Um, Nitin has got some very interesting advice. This is quite philosophical. I think you could read this on many levels. See okay. what you say. Nitin says, simplest piece of advice for Martin, stay put. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I wasn't planning on going anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I can't anyway. Lockdown, lockdown. Uh, so I can't. I can't go anywhere, even if I wanted to. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. Yeah. Um, everyone's saying talks about patience. Patience is the key. Yeah. There's an interesting expression here from Yosra. Yosra says, "Hey, Martin, I suggest simply that you play it by ear." Great mm. expression. Play nice. it by yeah. ear, which is kind of improvise. Mm. Simply follow your feelings when it comes to taking care of your baby, Lara. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that a lot as well. Yeah. Just go with the flow kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Play it by ear. Let me write that down as well. I just add it on. It's a great expression for everybody. Play it by ear. Um, it's kind of improvise, not, not plan. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the one you said? Go, go with the flow, right? Go, go with, with the flow. flow. Yeah. Yeah. It's another common expression go with the flow improvise play it by ear or to wing it that's the other one to wing, to wing it, it. yeah yep. just wing it is to do something without a plan or without any kind of preparation or yeah or, yeah or, or, or maybe or like, maybe like off, off, the off the cuff, cuff parenting off the cuff <laughs> parenting yeah <laughs> ah, good to do it off the cuff which is the same right yeah is that like no plan just just to, to improvise, improvise. And I like that. That's off the cuff parenting. That's nice creative language. That off the cuff, <laughs> off the cuff teaching. Yeah, <laughs> off yeah. The cuff yeah. Parenting. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, what's the? Uh, this is a hard question. It's one of those. What's the worst? What's the worst piece of advice you've been given that actually you know you realise was absolute nonsense? Mm, the, the worst piece of advice. I should have really thought about this because I thought he'll he definitely maybe ask me of like the best piece of advice, <laughs> but I didn't really consider this. That's a really maybe it's hard question. Yeah, maybe it's just because I'm such a um, positive person mm -hmm. that I was thinking it's only going to be 
uh, positive. positive questions. Um, well, I can, I can change the question because that, that's a bit of a, a, a mad question. A, a better question is, do you always follow other people's advice? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's the <laughs> the classic of someone tells you, okay, yeah, great, definitely going to do that. And then definitely, definitely not going to do that right. um, so no definitely don't um, and as I said it, it depends um, who's giving you advice um, yeah you always, you always want to think someone that's done what you want to do for example right. um, is the person to to listen to I suppose so yeah definitely right. definitely not so it depends if, if they've maybe been where you want to go yeah kind of idea um, and what about you? I'm going to put that difficult question on you now. Um, the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Um, yeah, okay, it's a good question. It, this is um, a combination of advice and my interpretation of the advice. Okay. Um, <laughs> so in hindsight, it actually turned out very well. Mm -hmm. In hindsight. Um, but... So somebody advised me um, to quit my job and start an online business. Okay. And they said, you can make loads of money like in months. And I, I was at the time a bit in a, in a, in a crossroads with whether I okay. should carry on working or do something different. Um, and I thought, okay, I'll have a go. So I decided to quit my job and start working online as an online teacher. Um and that was terrible advice, actually, <laughs> because um, I really, really struggled to make money um, for a mm. long time. And we went through financial hardship for quite a long time. Okay. Much better advice would have been carry on with your job, start working online. And when you're comfortable, give up your job. Mm. Um, but don't kind of jump into the uh, the online business. Yeah. Yeah. Um Although, yeah, I mean, I, I agree, but I think I'm probably the other person to that that have been doing that with, with my job. But then I think you go much slower because then your mm -hmm. your job obviously takes up a lot of your time. So mm -hmm. there are so many things you would like to do with your online business that you actually don't get time to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, probably, yeah, probably wasn't great advice in those months when you were struggling, but yeah. Uh, as you said, it probably turned out quite good in the end because I'm sure you worked much harder in those months to um, to to build it up. Yeah, because I'd burnt my bridges basically. Of course, I had, I had yeah. no choice. Yeah, so I, I had the term to, there. Burn your bridges. Yeah, burn your bridges. Let me yeah. put that one up as well. Um, yeah, I had to get on and, and make it happen. And and in, it, it, as I said, it turned out really well. I love what I'm doing, and it, it's great. Mm. Um, the the online teaching now is fantastic. Um, but it was quite difficult at the start. Of course, yeah. Let me just put up these expressions, some nice expressions. Um, just give me a minute. This technology is so complicated sometimes. Oh, I, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel you. you. Because uh, I, I, when, when I'm, I'm in your, your seat, seat, people don't realise how many things, how many screens you've got there and what you're typing. You're trying to talk yeah. to a person, you're typing. You're, it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. It's like the swan going across the water. It looks very smooth, but the little feet underneath are kicking yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. Doing, doing mm. a lot of work. Yeah. So what we've got here, we've got if following a people's advice, if they have done what I want to do, it's, inter it's an interesting grammatical structure. Um, mm -hmm. In hindsight means kind of looking back mm -hmm. um so we often say in hindsight it was a good thing or in hindsight it was a bad thing yeah, um, yeah. But at, at that moment, moment obviously, obviously you, you, you don't, you don't know, know, that know that at the time exactly yeah yeah burn your bridges um is to to burn your bridges is to is to what to, you've got you've like got no like way back. back let's say you you go to a place and then you've got no way back because right because um, you've you've burnt the bridges. There's no way back. Mm. So it's to make sure. Well, yeah, not make sure. Just that there is no way back. Let me put. Yeah. Let me put that. A, a similar to this. I, I remember reading once. I think it was Napoleon or something when they were, he was invading um, an island or something. They took the boats there, 
and then he said burn the boats yeah. because like this is it now we're not going back we're here yeah, exactly. <laughs> so similar to you with the online business yeah burn your bridges give up your job yeah. then uh you burn your bridges there's no way back yeah, um, yeah. So, so in, in this, this we, we said, said i'm similar, similar to jesus, jesus and, and you're obviously obviously similar, similar to napoleon to... um <laughs> Jesus and Napoleon. Exactly. Yes. Today's lesson about advice has been brought to you by Jesus <laughs> and Napoleon. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Burn your bridges. I, I, I mean, the good thing about burning your bridges is that you it does force you to, exactly. to, to work hard and make things happen. Exactly. Brilliant. I'm just going to check in with the comments. Um, where are we? The voice... Oh, there's oh, there's echo. Yeah, the echo happens when I bring up the blackboard. Yes, sorry about that. Oh, right. Um, pay your dues. I suppose Keith is a vers versatile man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here we go. Back to bringing up babies. I suggested breastfeeding is the best for your baby rather than using formula until two years old. Until two? Wow. I hadn't heard until two. Until, until at least two years old, says Ooh. Ooh, Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Uh, now, in in different countries, there's different cultures around breastfeeding, and um, mm. I, I have noticed it between because we brought our baby up in in China, and then and comparing that to England, there are different attitudes to breastfeeding. Yes. Oh right, no. Um, yeah, luckily, um, my wife um, managed to get the hang of that quite quickly. That was the other thing that when they brought the baby in. Like I said, after these two hours, a man just came into the room and almost in some way um, dumped her on us and just said, like, OK, try breastfeeding, change a nappy. And I, I was expecting them to show us how to do that, but they didn't. Right. And then I had to then get my phone and watch a YouTube tutorial about uh, <laughs> how to do these things. Somebody just mentioned that earlier. They said, just don't worry, just go on YouTube. You can learn anything you need to know about exactly. baby. Yeah. That's the the beauty of the world we live in today. That is uh, really true. You can learn stuff on YouTube. You can yeah. indeed. Brilliant. Good. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on the time. So Martin, I think we're probably going to wind up. Um, the conversation was great. Some really interesting language. And I'll, I'll go back and look at some of the language um, again um, and share that with the students. As we wind up, I mean... For people who want to find out more about you, where where should they go? Where can they get in touch with you? Um, yeah, like rockandrollenglish.com. If you just type rock and roll English into Google, yep. um, you will see various things pop up, the podcast and the website. Um, I would say, yeah, have a listen to the podcast and then go from there, really. Um, I've, I've got a YouTube channel. I don't really use that because there, there are so many different things to do i, I think right just try and concentrate on one yeah. and video making is definitely not um my forte so um i, I try to steer clear of that right um, so your focus so, yeah, there on the podcast definitely I, I try to focus more on the podcast so I, I personally love podcasts as well because just like them when in that dead time let's say of like cleaning or walking to the shop or something like that you can actually listen to something yeah. interesting so yeah I, i'm a i'm a podcast man fantastic and i i what i like about your podcasts i mean i've listened to a few is is the it's very very natural i mean it's, it's very natural english spoken in a very natural way and you bring out lots of interesting language that maybe a lot of other teachers wouldn't look at um mm. and i think it's really good yeah i, I often think as well like I, um if you compare that to like textbooks for example the way you've got actors that have got like a scripted conversation so one it, it's not very natural and to a lot of the language that you hear uh, oh, uh, the majority of it is is useful in textbooks but you also um so for example on my podcast we use language that you definitely wouldn't find in textbooks right um which can be very useful especially if you move to an english-speaking country yeah Absolutely. And your final piece of advice for the students? Uh, <laughs> was I supposed to give advice? Well, the advice <laughs> I give at the end of every podcast mm. is just keep on rocking. So um, I, I suppose that in, enjoy your time, enjoy life and keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Absolutely. Sounds fantastic. Sounds great. Brilliant. 
Okay. Um, that's nice, Martin. We're going to wrap up. Thank you very, very much for joining us. It's brilliant. No, thanks really for having me. It's been great. Uh, really enjoyed it. And I'm sure it's going to be very, very useful for students as well. Thanks a lot. So I'll log off now. Yeah. Just you to make can sure log I'm off. Good. I'll hang up okay. as well. Yeah. All right. All take right. Care. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. Thanks, Keith. Cheers. Thanks Bye-bye. a lot. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Right. Guys, let me bring us back and take this. Here we go. Yes. Wonderful. That was Martin. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, I just noticed I had the wrong banner up at the top, but it is. If you want to get in touch with Martin, it's Rock and Roll English. Um, you can find out more about what he's doing there, www.rockandrollenglish.com. I'll leave all the notes in the um, in, at the end of the at the end of the video. We're still going. We have another half an hour to carry on with today's lesson. Um, good. Thank you for that, Martin. Thank you for everybody. Stay with us. Um, good. I'm glad that it's useful. Some of you are saying it's nice to hear. Sometimes it's difficult, I know, to follow the conversation, but I, I do try and keep up with the, um, the notes to highlight some interesting things that come out um, as we're talking. Okay, excellent. What are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? When I'm not sure, I play a funny jingle. Good. Do you know what? I'm going to have some water. It's become a fashion in our house to drink from jars. Instead of using cups, we've started using jars. And it was my daughter that started this um, this fashion. And apparently, she said, it's very it's very Instagrammable. Although nobody's going to take a photo of me drinking. I said, no, 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 you take a photo and then you put it on Instagram. Maybe, I don't know. It's quite interesting. <laughs> Great. All of you um, mothers and fathers out there with young babies, You've learned lots of vocabulary today about nappies and pooing. <laughs> really interesting. It's a difficult time, right, having a baby? And it's difficult balancing the family life and balancing study. But do try and find a little bit of time, you know, every week or every day to carry on with your study. I know what's coming next. What's coming next is we're going to do a listening activity, right? So we are on the topic of advice and the listening activity um i'd like to do is this one it's one let me show you over here let me take off the advice we're going to watch a video of stan if you remember my um character stan the man um stan the man is giving his girlfriend some advice right um and <laughs> hide that there are six pieces of advice. Let's change this. He's giving his girlfriend, not some, but how do we make it countable? Oh, yes. Pieces, pie, P-I-E, helps me remember, apple pie. Six pieces of advice. Um, and for each one, the question is, what is the advice about? Now, the first one I gave you, right, is about cooking. That's the first one. But listen carefully and just make a note. Write down or think or put in the comments what are the six pieces or the six pieces of advice. What is the advice about, right? Now, this is advice that Stan is giving to his girlfriend. Um, his girlfriend is called Julie. <laughs> And we're going to find out exactly what advice, right? So it's listening and watching, right? So if you're ready, let's get it set up. Stan the man. What are the six pieces of advice about? Here we go. That didn't work, did it? Let me try again. <laughs> Yo, check it out. So this is Stan the man's advice to his lovely girlfriend, 
Julie, <laughs> number one. Yo, Julie, I suggest you add a bit more salt. Yeah, it's a bit bland for my liking. <laughs> Number two. Yo, Julie, why don't you watch The Crown? I've heard it's really good. Number three. Yo, Julie, if I were you, I'd buy him a T-shirt or something like that, yeah? Your dad is really into fashionable clothes. Number four. Hey, Julie, I reckon you should ask for a raise, yeah? It's high time you got, you got one. Number five. Julie, I think it would be best if you let me do it. You look really tired, my dear. Number six. Yo, Julie, I wouldn't do that if I were in your shoes. No, 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 no. That is asking for trouble, yeah? My advice would be to ignore it or Delete it. Check it out. This is Stan the Man's advice to his lovely girlfriend, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> Stan the Man, thank you very much, Stan, with your lovely advice to your lovely girlfriend, Julie. Um, very, very good. Let's check it out. Um, let's see. Hang on a minute. Advice. What was the advice about? So the first piece of advice was about cooking. Right. Here we go. Just a moment. Let me see if I can find some of you. Yeah, here we go. Let me share some of you. Some of you. Norul almost got it. Norul said a little bit more alt. It was actually, as Kunal says, salt. Use more salt. So it was about cooking. Yes. It was about cooking. So let me bring this up. Nope. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. Uh, what was the advice about? The first one was about cooking, right? A little bit more salt. The second one. What was the second one about? Mm. Becky says TV. Yes. Um, Emmy says crown. Well, yes. Uh, NH is probably the closest. Yes. Um, watch TV. So it was actually, it was actually, yeah. What TV series to watch? Or which TV series to watch? Come on, pull you down. Let's change that to which is better. Which TV series to watch? The Crown is one of those Netflix series about the um, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth and the royal family in England. <laughs> Number three, what was it? Um, it was related, as Quilly said, to clothing. Yes. Um, and also as Monda says, shopping. Yes, shopping. Even more specific, buying a T-shirt. Well done, Erica. Good. Yep. Uh, Eve Tao says, if I were you, I would buy him a T-shirt. Excellent. Very nice. So this one was, was buying a present for her dad. Buying a present for her Julie's, for Julie's dad, right? For her dad. Very nice. And it was a T-shirt or something, some kind of clothes. The next one was... Um, Quilly said a job raise. Yep. Becky also got salary raise. Um, anyone else? We've got Shav Kat Johns talked about salary. Yes. Ali promotions almost. Okay. So the answer here was asking her boss for a raise. So he was talking about asking her boss for a raise. Great. What else have we got? Um, the, the next one, number five. 
Aida talks about rest. Yeah, have a rest. AP about caring. It was definitely about caring. Um, as Steve says, related to health. Yes, good. So actually, actually, this one was about, excuse me, Steve, was about doing the house cleaning, the housekeeping or cleaning the house. They were talking about cleaning the house. Well, Stan was talking about cleaning the house and how he needs to help Julie. Julie should have a rest. Yeah, let me do it. Have a rest or as NH says, Stan says, let me do it. Um, and number six, what was number six? Number six. Um, we've got Nilufor says number six, ignore or delete it. But what is he talking about? Yeah, I mean, Sakshi, you're right. Ignore or delete it. Don't do that, as Linear says, right? What is, but what are they talking about? Yeah. Okay. Gulale, you're almost right. Delete a message. Yep. Yeah. So we're talking about, yeah, messages, emails or messages, right? So here they were actually talking about a scam email. There was a scam email and Julie is going to answer. And uh, of course, Stan says, don't do that. No, you're asking for trouble. Just ignore it or delete it, right? So those were the different situations. Now, the actual language that came up about advice, the actual language is here, right? Um, let me see if I can just take this onto one page. Will it all fit onto one page, maybe? Fill in the gaps. Hmm, maybe not. Let's have a look here. I, ba, 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 you add a bit more salt. It's a bit bland for my liking. I don't know if you know this word bland, but bland just means um, not salty, <laughs> basically. Something's bland. It has no taste. It's not salty. So it's a bit bland for my liking, what I like. And I think here he says, I, 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 ba, 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 you add. You could say, I suggest, right? Or I recommend. Remember, we saw at the beginning of the class, I suggest you do that. I suggest, I recommend you do that. I suggest or I recommend you add a bit more salt. Okay, good. Number two. Um, number two. Don't you watch The Crown? I've heard it's really good. This is another common way of giving advice is why don't you do this? Why don't you watch blah, 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 blah? Why don't you watch The Crown? Good. You're getting the answers coming in. Number three, if I were you, I, if I were you, I would buy him. Another very common way of giving uh, advice. If I were you, I would do that. If I were you, I would, if I were... I don't know what you say. If I were Martin, I would be very patient with my new baby. <laughs> Easier said than done, I know. I reckon you should ask for a raise, right? You should. I reckon you should. I think you should, or I reckon you should ask for a raise. Now, number five, I think it would be ba ba ba. If you let me do it, you look really tired. There are two options here. Stan actually said best, right? But you could also say better. It would be better if you let me do it. It would be best if you do this. <clears throat> so again, this is used commonly for giving suggestions or giving advice recommendations. And the last one, number six, I wouldn't do that if I were in your that's asking for trouble. If I were in your what? <laughs> well, there are two possibilities, right? If I were in your, here you go, here's one possibility. Shoes. If I were in your shoes, and that is what Stan says, right? If I were in your shoes, you could also say, if I were in your place, I wouldn't do that if I were in your place. 
that's asking for trouble that's going to bring you trouble um, my advice would be my advice would be my suggestion right would be I think you could say my recommendation it sounds a little bit more formal I think when we're speaking you know my advice my suggestion are probably more common I would say so my advice would be to ignore it altogether or just delete it the email or the message the scam right fantastic great so lots of language there you can use right on giving um giving advice lovely excellent <laughs> okay let me move on um to look at idioms some idioms for advice okay <clears throat> i'm going to share four idioms with you and we'll just go through them and if you have any idioms please do put them in the comments and let's have a look at them together so here's a number of idioms we can use when talking about not jobs and work when talking about giving advice or asking for advice okay <clears throat> first of all i'm at a loss can you give me some advice i'm at a loss right l-o-s-s -S. at a loss i'm at a loss the expression means that i don't know what to do basically so it's a little bit connected to the word lose when you lose your money or you lose something and you, you when that happens you don't know what to do but we say i'm at a loss right can you give me some advice um i've i don't know i've i've got my test tomorrow i'm at a loss how do i prepare i'm at a loss i'm preparing for ielts next month what do i do how do i prepare i'm at a loss i don't know i don't know what to do okay so i'm at a loss a word in your ear means a friendly piece of advice a friendly piece of advice i.e that's how i remember i.e pie piece have a piece of pie a friendly piece of advice right a word in your ear so anybody can do that so if somebody if you think you know that somebody needs some advice um you can just go a word in your ear i think you should do this a word in your ear why don't you watch the crown <laughs> or something like that okay next one don't bite off more than you can chew so to bite off more than you can chew that's to chew so don't do too much basically don't do too much don't do too much you know a lot of people bite off more than they can chew they take on too much work they do too many things um it anything really just don't do too much last one give it your best shot give it your best shot means to do your best as you can guess i guess just do your best right give it your best shot i'm not sure exactly where the shot comes from whether it's shooting a gun or shooting like a basketball or just doing your best you know give it your best shot do your best try your best fantastic all right good yeah this is a nice one we've almost got a nice expression <laughs> almost nick um learn walking before start running so what we would actually say is learn to walk before you run right it's a nice expression i'll just add that learn to walk before you before you run so learn so you can imagine what it means right it's fairly clear a bit like don't bite off more than you can chew i mean that's 
it's really the same. Don't do too much. Brilliant. <laughs> Anyak, I'm at a loss. My friends will come to my home tomorrow. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to cook? What are you going to do with them? This is a good one. Think before you jump. I know I never think before I jump. It's a nice expression. Think before you jump. Think before you leap or think before you jump. We have both of those. So think before you take action. Think before you do something. Yeah, most of us don't, right? We just jump straight in. <clears throat> Great. This one, make it a ring in your ear. That's interesting. I don't know that expression. Mm, I'm not sure about that. What does that one mean? Or what, what expression are you putting there? Tell me what you think that means. That's interesting. Yosra says, uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. So don't, you should not count on something until it has begun. Or maybe one, one when one is very sure about it. Yeah, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Let's add that one. That's definitely an idiom. Your chickens before they hatch. Right, fantastic, nice, good. <laughs> Davud, thank you very much for your comment. Right. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Interesting. Let's add that one and then I'm going to move on. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. That's interesting. I mean, don't bite the hand that feeds you is literally um, is literally what? Don't attack the good things you have. I mean, if somebody is, for example, if somebody is um, helping you, don't go and attack them because they'll stop helping you. Or if somebody is paying you to work, then don't criticize that person because they'll take the money away. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. So if somebody's giving you food, yeah, don't bite the hand, right? Don't shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> so basically, don't attack the things you really need. Things or people, maybe. Okay, nice. And this one, think before acting. Right, lovely. There's a lot of idioms there. There's a lot more coming in. <clears throat> ah, to remember it at all times. To remember it at all times. Interesting, right. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe that's an American one. I'm not too sure, but that's an interesting one. Great. Thank you very much. Listen, thank you, everybody, for lots of ideas about idioms. I'm going to move on, right? Um, I realize I'm running short of time, but not to worry. We're going to do a very quick, um, a very quick one of these. Let's try one of these because I've got a few other things I'd like to do today. <clears throat> Where is it? It's not there. Where is it? Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Whenever you try and find things, they never quite work, are they? Sample answers. We're going to have a look at sample answers. So this is, I'd like you to write down a question um, on the topic of advice, right? So we are talking about advice. Write down a question and I'll give you a sample answer, right? Okay, 
I'll give you a second to do that. Cokey, <clears throat> cokey advice. So Oh, some interesting expressions there. I'll gather those up. So here's a nice one. Let's try this one. This is from Vitao. Do you often follow the advice from other people? Do you often follow other people's advice? Okay, let me just change the, um, the font just a moment. Do you often thank you very much for that question v that's great do you often follow do you often follow the uh, other people's advice i'm going to change it a bit i would say other people's advice just to sound a little bit more natural do you often follow other people's advice <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> well it's an interesting question. I would say it depends on who is giving the advice. If it's a person that I trust strongly and somebody who maybe has been through a similar experience, then I would probably heed what they've got to say. Um, however, you know, if it's unsolicited advice from somebody maybe I don't know or don't respect or don't trust, then it's unlikely I'm going to follow what they say. So I can be a little bit picky about whose people I, whose advice I follow. Hmm. There you go. Nice. Some interesting words, right? Remember, follow advice, heed advice, trust, trustworthy, good expressions, good words to use. Nice. Thank you for that question. Let's take one more question. Okay, this is an interesting question. Um, when do old people ask for advice from young people? This is from Christina. Nice question. Let me, um, again, just copy that. Great, thank you, Christina. Lovely question. <clears throat> Sounds like a part three question, I think. When do old people ask for advice from young people? It's interesting, right? Because often we think about um, young people asking advice from old people, but this is turning the table uh, on it on its head. Um, and I think old people, when it comes to modern technology, old people tend to turn to young people for advice. Um, you know, take for example, nowadays a lot of old people are going online onto the internet. So they're buying tablets and smartphones that they may have never had before. Um, and these silver surfers are eager to get online, but often don't know how the device works. So they may um, ask their, their grandchildren or younger people to, to help them to do that, to show them how the device works, how to connect to the internet, um, and, you know, how to, to make the most of the different tools that they've got to do that. So I think technology is, is a case where definitely older people would turn to young people to get some suggestions. Right. <laughs> OK, good. Nice question. Interesting answer. I mean, that was the first one that came to my mind was about the, the whole idea of uh, technology and technology where older people you know struggle and they help or they want young people's help could be other things could be fashion could be clothes could be anything right it depends whether you know the old people as well right lovely good okay guys i'm going to move on um from here we've been doing model answers i'm going to move on to look at kahoot um kahoot is where we're going to do a final review of some of the vocabulary and expressions that we've seen today. Um, 
I think a lot of you know Kahoot, but if you don't, don't worry, I will explain what we're doing. It's a very simple online game where you're going to get a chance to get a question and you answer A, B, C or D, basically. Um, so we've got one here on advice today. You can play it either by putting your answer in the comments or you can enter the system and I'll show you how to do that. If you come across into kahoot.it, so it's kahoot.it. If you go in there, um, then basically you need to put in a pin. You choose a name. There's a, a made up name you can choose. Go to kahoot.it. Put in the pin 7088970 and you can join us, right? There's also a, a mobile app if you want to download the app or you just go to the website kahoot.it. Um, choose a name, a nickname, and then the pin is 7088970. Seven zero eight eight nine seven zero. Come and join us. If you can't get in, don't worry. You can just have an. Uh, you can just put your answer in the comments. Yeah. So if you're new, Kahoot is just a game, and we're going to practice some vocabulary from today to see who has been paying attention. Lovely music. Right, good. You're sharing your nicknames. That's great. We've got quite a few people in, so let's get going. Let's start up. So here's the first question about advice. <coughs> Which one is the odd one out? So which word is different? Which is the odd one out or different? So just choose the word or write it into the comments. Which one is different? <clears throat> You've got five seconds left. Well done, Ragav and Suchi. Right, well done. The vast majority of you got it right. It's videos because the others are all uncountable. Do you remember at the start of the class, we said advice is uncountable. You say some advice, right? And it's the same with news and information. You cannot count them. If you count them, you have to say a piece of advice, a piece of news, a piece of information or a bit of information. Great. Well done, guys. Well done. Very nice. Let's look at the leaderboard. Majestic Pony <laughs> is up at the top and there's a decisive mouse. Very interesting. Number two. Next question. She advised me blank. She advised me blank. Tricky. She advised me blank. Manas, well done. Naim, well done. Well done, Marit. Well done. The vast majority of you got that right. She advised me to do it. Great. We looked at that at the beginning of the class different ways of using advice or suggest, advise, suggest and recommend. Well done. Excellent. Oh, things have changed a lot. Um, Cheerful Dove is at the top now, whoever you are. <laughs> Red Dog second, Joyful Eagle third. Question number three. If I were you, I blank go. 
If I were you, I blank go. Thank you, Roberta, for your comment. Christina, well done. Lee, well done. Natia, good. Jane, well done. Let's see. Wow, that's impressive. Well done, almost everybody. 130 people got would, which is correct. If I were you, I would go. Right? Classic second conditional. Well done. Nice. Let's move on. I think it is Oh, it's a score, the scoreboard. Cheerful Dove is still happily flying at the top. And Red Dog is coming in second. Joyful Eagle struggling to move up. <laughs> Great. Question number four, the last one. I don't know what to do. I'm at a blank. I don't know what to do. I'm at a blank. This is an idiom you should be able to get. I don't know what to do. I'm at a blank. Yeah. Hermione, well done. Marit, Marit, well done. Ragav, good. Gushoda, nice. Lavanya, be careful. Right, well done. Again, the vast majority got it right. It's loss. L-O-S-S, -S, pronounced loss. I'm at a loss, meaning I don't know what to do. Lovely. Okay, let's see the podium. Where are we? <laughs> Joyful Eagle, third. Red Dog. And is it the Dove? It is. It's the happy, cheerful Dove. First place. Whoever you are, well done. Fantastic. <laughs> and that is Kahoot. Lovely. So a nice bit of revision, a fun way for you to practice what you've seen today. Very, very good. So we're almost at the end. In a moment, I'm going to finish up with the lucky draw. If you remember, um, we've done a lot today, but we have got to finish up with that lucky draw. I've got to focus. I've got so many things going on. So before, not before, let's do that right now. So I got half a million subscribers on YouTube. I'm incredibly thankful for that. Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, <laughs> subscribe um, just so that you can find out about all the new videos coming up from me. We do the live lessons every Thursday normally an hour and a half, sometimes a bit longer, sometimes a bit less um, at 10 a.m. Spanish time or Central European time. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who have been following me for such a long time and also for the new people who are following me on YouTube and my website. Um, it's great and it's so inspiring for me to be able to reach so many many students it's one of my big dreams and ambitions was to help and support you know students all across the world and this is a great opportunity to do it so a big thank you so i'm going to give five um of my courses to five people so a lot of you have put a comment on the on the youtube video and i've gave, i've taken all those comments we're going to extract them we're going to put them through some software to pick out five winners. And what you can do, you win, is you win either my course about IELTS speaking get a band seven, or if you prefer, you can do the fluency course, right? So if you win, you can choose whichever course you want. The fluency course is much more about fluency, intonation, um, automating grammar, so if fluency is a problem for you, that's a good one. The other course is a complete course looking at exam preparation, exam technique, model answers, lots of language for part one, part two and part three. It's a bigger course and that's my main course. So you can choose either of those. But let's get into it. When I've chosen the winner, um, please do contact me. You can do that 
either through Facebook Messenger or email. Um, I will try and contact you. I will publish the um, the names. Um, but if you can contact me, do. And you can do that through... Um, I'll give you an email for the winners. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is one way. If you want, you can contact me by email, Keith um, at keyspeakingacademy.com um, or just Facebook Messenger is great as well. But I will try and track you down and find you guys as well. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do the draw. Um, I'm going to switch over to this software and uh, we're going to pick out five people. Drum roll. Here we go. Let's let me find how to show you this. How am I going to show you this? Let me try and do it this way. Bear with me. Right, here we go. Let's begin. We're going to start and pick the first winner. And the first one is Kazia Stan. My greetings. Greetings from Kate. Favourite dishes, chicken broth. Lovely, fantastic. <laughs> you can recommend it if I've caught a cold. They do say chicken soup is great for the soul, right? And all things like that. Fantastic, brilliant. So I'm just going to um, make a copy of that so I remember. And we are going to copy unique link. Let me do that as well. And let me move forward. Another winner. The next winner is Patima Shahama. Favourite food, ice cream and jackfruit. I love jackfruit. I had lots of that when I was in Malaysia. Very, very nice. Lovely. Well done. Congratulations. Again, I'm just going to paste and copy so I keep a record of all of this. And let's move on to pick another winner. Diana Mary, delighted with your offer. My name, my name is Diana and my favourite food is pizza. Wow, pizza. Everybody loves a bit of pizza. Over here in Santander, I think fr Friday night is frozen pizza night for so many families over here. Brilliant. Copy the unique link. So I just copy that as well. And let's move on to the next one. Number four. Druval Patel. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, Favourite food is Pani Puri, which is also known as water balls. Sweet and sour, lovely. I do like a bit of sweet and sour. Congratulations, brilliant. Let's put this up. Also to remind me, I'm just going to copy the link. So that's number four. We've got one more left. Da, 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 da. Here we go. And the last, number five. Let's see who's the winner. Barath Raj. My name is K Barath Raj. Favourite food until now is prawn biryani, which means it might change in the future. Who knows? But fantastic. Congratulations. I'm just going to copy that. Brilliant. That's it. That is the final result. Well done, all of you, my friends. That is excellent. Very, very pleased for all of you. Brilliant. Nice. Well done. So we've got five people, five prizes. Um, do get in touch with me. Um, I will try and find you. But if, you know, if not, do get in touch with me, Keith at keyspeakingacademy.com. Um, and I will also put the names in this video description and just in social media on Facebook so that you, you know, we can get in touch and then I will gift you the course, whichever one you like. You can have the fluency course or the IELTS speaking success course. Congratulations to you.
Very, very pleased. Very happy. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Talking of Facebook, if you haven't joined the group, we have the group, the Facebook group, Keith's Mastermind Community. Um, just look and search on Facebook and you'll find it there. And just a reminder that the, the notes from today um, you can find on the website at the Keith Speaking uh, Academy and it's in the free live lessons area. Just go there on the website and you'll be able to find um, all of the, the latest live lessons and the PDFs that you can download um, directly onto your computer so you can carry on studying. Great. They say studying a little bit every day is the secret, right? Do a little bit every day to practice. So a big thank you to all of you for joining me. A big thank you to Martin for being our guest today. And a congratulations to the five of you who won. That's brilliant. Um, that's it. Look out for my video on Saturday, day after tomorrow, about midday. It's all about how to improve your speaking skills. Five awesome tips on improving speaking skills. And I will look forward to seeing you next week for another live lesson. In the meantime, keep studying, stay positive, stay safe, right? Um, if I were you, my advice would be study five minutes every day and keep practicing your speaking. That's it from me. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye now.